Hello and welcome to lesson 46 of Additional Maths with Mr. Barrow. This is the penultimate lesson of the course. So one more lesson to go after this one. Today we're going to be looking at kinematics involving differentiation. So kinematics is the study of the position and velocity and acceleration of an object. And we're going to be linking it with calculus, which is the study of continual change. So when we're talking about the change in position of an object and how it's changing, the rate at which it's changing. We're, we're dealing with calculus within the study of kinematics. So let's see how it links. So we know that if we have a graph of y equals f of x, then dy by dx represents the gradient of the graph, doesn't it? It represents the gradient function. It represents the rate of change of y with respect to x. So as x changes, okay? It's the rate at which y is changing. It's the rate at which you are moving vertically for every step you move horizontally. So that's what it represents, okay? And it tells us the gradient of the graph. And that's an abstract y and x. It doesn't, it's, it's a generalized, um, graph there. We haven't um, tied it down to any specific thing. But let's say we have a graph which is tied down and we have a graph of the displacement of an object against its time, the time it takes. So here we have a graph. The blue graph is the graph of the displacement of the object as a function of the time. Okay, where before we had y as a function of x, now we have s as a function of t. OK, it's the same idea. So as we move along the blue line, we, it is telling us the position, the displacement of an object as we are increasing the time. OK, so initially it's starting to go away from the origin. OK, so it's increasing its distance from an object. So the value of S is increasing. Then it stops increasing and it goes back towards zero and then it goes back away again okay and if we measured the tangent the gradient of the tangent at any one point that would tell us the rate at which the displacement was changing the rate of change of the displacement of an object is how many meters it's moving per second so here the rate of change of the object represents the velocity. And we know that in our GCC course, that if we have a, a distance time graph, a basic distance time graph, really a displacement time graph, it should be, then if we want to find the speed of an object at a specific point in time, we use our, our, our line of sort of our, our ruler and we put it down against the curve and we try and put it down so that it just touches the curve and we draw a tangent at that point. And then we measure the gradient of that tangent and that gives us the speed at that instant in time or an estimate for it. Today, we're going to be looking at not using an estimate by sort of trying to draw a line of best fit for a tangent, but actually using calculus to find the exact velocity for a displacement time graph. So on a displacement time graph, if we differentiate, it represents the velocity. The gradient of a displacement time graph represents the velocity. So let's look at how these three link, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. If I start with displacement S and I differentiate it, then I get the velocity. So V is equal to dS by dt. It is the rate of change of your displacement with respect to time. And that makes sense because it's in meters per second. Meters is displacement. Per time is S over T. The change in S over the change in T, that is velocity. So differentiate, you get velocity. Now have a think about what, if I had a velocity, time graph, 
what would the gradient of the velocity time graph represent? What would the rate of change of your velocity represent? So the rate at which your velocity is changing is in fact your acceleration. So if we differentiate again, we turn velocity into acceleration. So acceleration is the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. And that makes sense as well because it's meters per second per second. So it's velocity over time. Okay, so change in velocity over time. So we're going to be using this. We are going to be using a function of displacement and differentiating it to find the velocity of an object. Differentiating again to find the acceleration of an object. Okay, so let's have a look at in practice what that looks like. Okay, here's our worked example. For the first six seconds of a 100 meter race, Usain Bolt's displacement in meters is given by s is equal to 3t squared minus a sixth t cubed. So this allows us to substitute a value of time and know where Usain Bolt is at any one moment in time in the first six seconds of the race. Okay, so just substituting a value of time gives us the displacement. First question is, find an expression for his velocity in terms of t. Okay, well, if I know that the displacement is 3t squared minus a sixth t cubed, then the displacement is a function of t. And therefore, to find velocity, all I need to do is differentiate that. The velocity is ds by dt. 3t squared differentiates to 6t. Minus a sixth t cubed differentiates to minus 3 sixths or minus a half t squared. Okay, so that is an expression for the velocity in terms of t. 6t minus a half t squared. So, next bit. Part B, find the velocity initially. So find Usain Bolt's velocity initially. So that word initially means at the start. So that's when t is zero. So part B, part one, is when t is zero, what is v equal to? Well, we substitute the value of zero into our expression for v. So six zeros minus half of zero squared. So that's just zero meters per second. And that we expect that at the start of the race, okay, just before, just as he's about to explode from the blocks, the velocity is zero. And then you accelerate up to a maximum speed from zero. Okay. You don't start the race running. Okay. Part two. It's just about substituting t is 6 into it, finding the velocity when t is 6. So when t is 6, the velocity is 6 sixes minus a half of 6 squared. And that gives us 18 meters per second. By the way, I have just made up this, this equation. I, d I don't know if this actually models Usain Bolt's displacement during the race or velocity, etc. Okay. Now, part C. Find an expression for Usain Bolt's acceleration in terms of t. If I have velocity, then acceleration is simply the rate of change of velocity with respect to time. So I need to just differentiate again. So 6t differentiates to 6. Minus a half t squared differentiates to minus two lots of halves so and minus one t to the power of one. So that's minus t. So that is the expression for the acceleration in terms of the time. 
So now part D, I can use that to find the acceleration at different points. The acceleration initially is when t is zero. So when t is zero, what is the acceleration? The acceleration is six minus zero, which is six meters per second per second. And then part two, find the acceleration when t is six. When t is six, the acceleration is six minus six, which is zero meters per second per second. So Usain has stopped accelerating by six seconds and hopefully reached a terminal velocity in which he will end the race at and, and avoid slowing down if possible. Okay, so that is how to do these questions. If you have a function of displacement, you differentiate to find a function of velocity. If you have a function of velocity, you differentiate that to find a function of acceleration because those are all just rates at which things are changing. Velocity is simply the rate at which your displacement is changing. Acceleration is simply the rate at which your velocity is changing. So we just apply our processes of calculus, specifically differentiation, to go between them. Okay, so have a go at this question. If you feel ready, okay. Have you enjoyed my fantastic artwork? So for the first three seconds, the displacement in meters of a hunting female cheetah from its initial position is given by S is equal to nine T squared minus T cubed. I want you to find an expression for the velocity, the velocity initially and at T is three, an expression for her acceleration in terms of T and her acceler acceleration initially and at T is three. Okay. So have a go, pause, and then I'll go through the answer. So the answer to this is as follows. First one. To find expression for the velocity, we simply differentiate the displacement. So 9t squared becomes 18t. Minus t cubed becomes minus 3t squared. So that is the function of the velocity. Then, to find the velocity initially, we just substitute t is 0 into that, we get the velocity is 0. And when t is 3, we substitute 3 into that, and we get the velocity is 27. Then, part c, an expression for the acceleration, we just differentiate the velocity. We get acceleration is 18 minus 16. And then we substitute t is 0 and t is 3 in there, and we get acceleration is both 18 meters per second per second, for when the initial acceleration, and then when t is three, the acceleration is zero. Okay, if you got those right, superb, well done. Okay, it's time now to practice. And you might approach questions which say things like, find the maximum velocity of this cheetah. Okay, if you're looking for something like the maximum of something, Right. When, we, when you learnt about differentiation, you learnt how to find something called stationary points. Those are maxima or minima values. Okay? Stationary points are when the gradient is equal to zero. So if you wanted to find the maximum velocity, you differentiate velocity and find out when that is equal to zero, which is essentially when the acceleration is zero. Okay? Because you reach your maximum velocity when your acceleration is zero. Okay, so that's a stationary point on your velocity graph, the highest point. So you get positive acceleration up to a maximum, then a zero acceleration. You stay at that maximum momentarily and then negative acceleration away from it will, will give you on a velocity graph a maximum point for the velocity. Okay, and if you wanted to find your maximum displacement away from an origin, then you just simply differentiate displacement and find when that is zero. So that's when your velocity is zero, okay? So to practice, go to exercise 16.2 in the textbook and enjoy using differentiation for different functions of t, okay? And I'll see you in the last lesson where we apply integration to this process. Okay, enjoy. <laughs>